We told you it was coming, and yet, here we are. Household debt, like you see on this caption above, household debt soared to a 15-year a 15 year high, at fast pace of 15 years, rather. And according to the article, it says the increase stems from a combination of robust consumer demand and higher prices. So we talked about how inflation works and things like that. And at the genesis of this channel, we said people are, no matter the price, if people want it, they're going to continue to buy it. They're going to continue to buy it because people don't have the understanding or the wherewithal to curb their spending because everybody has that baby syndrome. I want it, I want it, I want it. So they spend it and then worry about the consequences later. But we'll get more to that in the video. Alex, bring us in. Hey guys, yeah, welcome back to Passive Money. <laughs> welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex, that's Kirby over there. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, Kirby's got a lot to say on this. He's very excited about this, uh, this topic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of just sit back and watch it happen. Uh, I know we talk about this a lot and we you talk about it in the class all the time. It's crazy to see all these like new records, these all time highs. Um, and I, I read an article it's talking about, uh, you know, people are using more credit cards because they they can't keep up with, uh, say, like the inflation cost and their jobs aren't paying them more. And so they're using more credit cards to cover those expenses. And uh it was in correlation with uh, with this article that, you know, we're at an all time high. I'm seeing more and more all time highs with uh, bad financial uh, statistics. Well, yeah. And, and a couple of things to do with it is the cost of goods, services and products are are increasing higher than uh, people's wages are. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, again, like we talked about in a previous video, inventory your life. Mm -hmm. If you have to. If you have to jump to credit cards to pay for your life, so let's say you was making seventy thousand dollars last year, and then now you're making seventy thousand dollars this year, no pay increase at all. But now to sustain the same lifestyle you had last year, you need credit cards to do it. You need to inventory your life and start cutting things out because I, I mean, I can always tell you go get another job, but then they go say, "Who the hell do Kirby think he is?" Telling me they don't know my life. You know, I got stuff to do. But you you have to inventory your life and cut out the things that's is not a necessity because all this debt, especially at you know higher interest rate, are going to put you in a downward spiral and, and put you further and further in the rat race where you're going to be working for the next 15, 20 years, getting rid of debt for stuff that you paid for, that snicker bars you paid for yesterday in the gas station, you're going to be paying for 20 years from now because you want to still maintain that same lifestyle. <laughs> what sense do that make? But that's what yeah. that's what people are doing. But we talked about this, like you said, in the class. We talked about this at nauseum, and I was saying it was coming. And then everybody in the class was just sitting there looking like, but why would people do that? But now they see it. It's it's an emotional state. I always say, and people might you know crucify me for this. The most emotional people are the brokest people. And money is all that's all money is, is the emotion. Like no matter what channel what uh what person that you hear that's successful they always talk about people don't have the mindset for acquiring yeah. money acquiring wealth is because it's all it's all just a play on emotions the more people then only you gotta do is look at the people that have the wealth is majority of the people in mass is like oh he's a prick he's this he's that the only difference between people that's poor and people that's rich is it's the emotional state of it. Most people that have money, they just use logic first. They don't, you know, have an emotional response to everything and just go jump into it off emotional response. They use logic and logic will make money. Emotional will make, emotions will make you lose money. And I always say, and I always ask people, tell me emotional decision that you made that turned out to be the right decision. Just people just need to sit there for a second, pause the video, sit there and think about it. Tell me the emotional decision you made that was correct. Of course, somebody will come up with, oh, it was an emotional decision for me to have a baby. Oh, okay. 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 I'm not going to get into my feelings on I'm not going to get into my you know theories on that. But that's this emotional decision that you made, and it turned out to be the right decision. That's it. But go ahead, Alex. People have to hold themselves accountable, uh, you know, in this situation. Like we talked about, people will give up uh 
they they will give up what they need before giving up what they want and it's showing in it it and like you say numbers never lie and it's showing in this, in this uh statistic right now if uh if people did what you said uh inventory their life out like we talked about in another video and created a budget and started cutting out things that they don't need they wouldn't have to be using credit cards to pay for their bills uh and which is at an all time high right now um Yeah, it, it all starts with the, the individual or the couple uh, themselves to, uh, to take control and take action, take control of their, what, you know, their, their finances. Just, just listen to the statistic. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but listen No, to go the ahead, statistic. go ahead. Total debt jumped by $351 billion just from July 22 to September 22. Jeez. $351 billion in credit card debt. Year over year. This is within, you know, three months. Yeah. Insane. Insane. So uh the this this thing called collective household IOU. Uh that's just you know credit cards or you know store cards and stuff like that. U.S. is at a fresh record, $16.5 trillion in IOU payment. So, you know, you buy something now, you got to pay it later. Credit cards, that buy now, pay here, pay never stuff, all that stuff. Pay never. Student loans, student loans and, that, and all that stuff jumps into that also. But $16.5 trillion. It's amazing. Most people also, they will, like, they will say that, like, especially in these times, right, with houses. I'm sure some people will say, oh, well, I had to buy a house. Like you said, oh, I had to have a baby. That was an emotional decision. A lot of people will use that for, like, buying a house. Like, buying a house is not a wise, like, it, it's it's not a wise emotional decision. Most people buy houses because of emotion. It's not like, the, it's not an investment, you know, like, if you're going to go buy a house to live in, it's not like it's an investment to you. And most people will use that argument that it is. Um, but especially in these times right now, people are buying homes because they have fear of missing out. They think that housing prices are just going to an all time high. Um, I mean, even with housing sales declining, we still see people buying uh, homes that used to be, say, $200,000 two years ago at 350000 now at 8% interest. You know, when housing prices, if they gave it a little bit more time, would just come down. Um, they, they have this fear and they're being controlled by emotion, basically. And, um, and, and that's all it is, is, you know, people thinking that they're making wise decisions, but you really have to think logically when it comes to think about everything. You can't just think about, oh, we just need a place to stay and housing prices are crazy. We just want to get right. That's not a wise decision. It's you're being emotional about it. You really have to look at all the numbers. And if it's a right fit for you and your family and what would be better renting or uh, buying in that time. And to your point of people buying the houses now, so just people understand historically since the beginning of time, the annual appreciation on a house is three to 5% annually, three to 5%. In the last two years, The house, the appreciation of houses went up 36% and then like another 28% in 2021. Uh, so if you pay any attention to the market or if you've been alive longer than, you know, 10 years, when we have hyperbolic moves up, it comes down. Think of the dot-com crash. Think of the financial crisis. Think of just the stock market this year at the beginning of the year till present. Hyperbolic moves is going to come down. So you're buying now fear of missing out, but you don't understand the dynamics of the market has changed. The interest rates was at 3%, 2%, like 2.9, 3.5% in these years that we had this hyperbolic increase. Now the interest rates are at 6, 7, 8% and nobody's buying. So to get that supply and demand back into unison with each other so people will start buying, home prices have to come down some to... meet that supply and demand equilibrium to make that happen. So everybody thinking that, oh, I have to buy it now. I have to buy it now because the price is going to 
continue to skyrocket. The Fed said that they're going to keep interest rates higher for longer, so they're going to make and what lower the interest rates are higher for longer, that means that car payments, credit card payments, and uh home purchase monthly payments, that's what I'm talking about. Monthly payments will be higher historically than what it usually is. I mean, now people that I mean, back in 2020, 2021, when interest rates were at two and three percent, you had the dilemma of, all right, my rent is let's say eleven hundred dollars a month, but I could go buy this two hundred thousand dollar house at eleven hundred dollars a month. But now, mortgage. So, and then we've in for the past, you know, 10, 15 years, we've had that dilemma: how much is my rent payment? How much would the mortgage payment be? But now the interest rates are higher, so now mortgage payments a month is. 25, 26, 27. Some, I mean, I don't know people that's paying $4,800 a month because of the higher interest rate. Now you have the inverse dilemma. Do I want to pay $4,800 a month to buy a house or do I want to pay $2,300 to rent? So understand the dynamics is shifting and then that will bring house prices down and there's other articles out there. Um, uh, the Realtors Association said that to get House prices back into equilibrium with that three to five percent annual increase year over year historically. The prices of houses need to come down twenty percent. National house prices need to come down twenty percent from where they are today. So you just you know, Alex, just piggybacking off your point about the home buying. Just wanted to throw some numbers into that matrix. Of right, and just a reminder to everybody. I mean, the options of house hacking, for example, are still out there. You know, even in hard times like this, which would probably be better for those uh in harder times um you know i know a couple of people personally that you know one uh one person i know has a house and uh they rent out um i think it's a two or three bit i can't remember but they rent out basically both the rooms and it practically covers their mortgage you know um this person's in the military so they're not home as much but you know by renting out the other two rooms it covers their mortgage and you know, for someone maybe in the military that is a lower rank, not making a lot of money, uh, this could be an option to really just cut out that whole cost of, have you know, your housing cost. Um, for families, it might be different. But even for families, I mean, you know, it it can still happen. You can still rent out your rooms, even if you if it's you and your wife or you and your husband, you can still do it. It's, you know, it's not like, oh, now that you're married, it's impossible. Well, Alex, you're going to get hate mail. Uh -uh, I ain't having nobody up in my house. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With all that being said, everybody, thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment in the comment section below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. We'll see you.